So I think the problem that Alpha Investment is facing is he needs to sell this product. He clearly has a lot of inventory of MetaZoo and Flesh and Blood, Weiss and other inventory. And people want me to believe that he is a successful restaurateur and he's got this other business going. No, this is a full-time job. This is actually a large business and he should really have employees doing tasks like shipping and stuff. Um, to my knowledge, I watched the MetaZoo Pyramid Scheme, Nightfall. He is shipping all these things himself and doing a very poor job of shipping. In fact, in that video, most people are concerned that he's going to damage the Rudy promo card because he's shipping it with blisters and obviously a booster box. He's making a lot of money from these people. Um, he's making a lot of money. If you have any idea, the Rudy Gem Keeper, right? What's, what was that? Was that $1,000 a card? Something like that, right? Um, that was a great promo for him. He wants to continue as if it's 2020, but it's not. Um, there is a great video by a Flesh and Blood content creator where he says that Rudy needs to know the meta. He needs to play the game of Flesh and Blood. He needs to do things. Like, he was very good for these games in the beginning, but he's becoming toxic to them now. And that's the same thing that, and this is why he made the video about Flesh and Blood. It was Flesh and Blood who contacted him. Mike may still not never have contacted him, right? Uh, and there's no... Meta Zoo in this email, which is a lengthy enough email explaining why the video was deleted. So on one hand, he can't really tell you what's going on because, you know, that would be bad. Uh, that would kill his sales. On the other hand, he really does feel like things are going down. And the more he sells, this is the same problem I have with the Hello Kitty. I, I just kind of map out the problem for you as simply as I can. Um, for Hello Kitty, if you bought Hello Kitty at 50 or $70 a box. I'll give you the Argos problem. If you bought Hello Kitty at $70 or less, $70 according to Nick and Strength, and I have no reason to doubt this is incorrect, is what Nick and Strength gets them from his distributor. Okay? That means the partners, maybe Rudy, gets them cheaper. They're selling, Argos is selling this $70 box or less that he gets for, for $120 with a promo of himself. Again, people are not so stupid nowadays to understand the promo is just trash. It's a free promo given to partners and content creators and, you know, just to have them sell stuff. Well, this product that was being sold at $120 is sitting below 60 right now. And it's probably going to drop 50 by the time this video is uploaded. So the customer base has purchased a product for $120 from you that has lost half that they can buy from TCG player for half. That's exactly the problem Alpha Investments is describing. And this, and, and it's not even, I'm using the Hello Kitty example because I know about that example quite well. So either you're selling it to your Patreons, your Timmies, and they're eating a massive L, right? Because they could buy it cheaper on TCG player, which is exactly what Alpha Investment has quoted here, or you don't sell. So the only way you can sell this is by faking positivity. Oh, guys, this Hello Kitty is going to the moon. We're going to see $10,000 $10, a box soon. Buy it, you know, one twenty. But how much, how many MetaZoo sets later? Like, you know, you've been doing this since Nightfall. I have access to all the kits and their prices and so on. And, and one idea, what I have for a video, if I'm not too lazy, is kind of look at every single MetaZoo product that Rudy has ever sold and what the current price of the product is today. I know for a fact Rudy doesn't want that video to be made because it's savage, man. I've looked at the prices of these boxes, the UFO boxes at 20 that he was trying to sell for like 200 at the time. Like, you know, we're talking about 90% minimal loss from these kits. Minimal loss. And possibly, potentially, like with the... If you bought $8,200 of that one set, you would be down to two fifty right now in terms of the value of the booster boxes. $8,200, guys, is a lot of money for anybody. I don't care how wealthy you are. $8,200 is a boat. It's a mother-effing boat. It's a Kia car. You know, it's a life-changing amount of money for a lot of individuals in today's economy, simply put. So we have a situation which I think is quite interesting and intriguing and something where 
I do feel like um, in terms of the future, uh, people will be mad. You know, you don't lose $8,200. You don't buy spend $8,200 on something and not get mad at it when it goes to zero. Ba I mean, I'm calling it zero because it's so close to zero, like there's no point. You're never going to sell it, right? So it's basically zero. The other part that I really want to draw out is that these local game stores, Rudy always pretends that he's the hero of the local game stores. No, they had enough of this shit. I know exactly who's reporting him. It's the local game stores. They, they, they don't want to deal with this anymore. They don't want to deal with a dude undercutting them at every... A guy who's not offering... Vet, like, whatever you think about Magic the Gathering, how they give out promos is relatively fair. Friday Night Magic, you physically have to go there. You have to finish in the top eight. If there's only eight people, everyone gets a promo. Great. Uh, game Day, you have to, to get the play mat. You have to win. Then you get the play mat. I mean, this is these are event-based promos. Not You don't get a promo because you bought something, like maybe a buy a box promo, but then everyone has that opportunity. There's not one store that gets like a special promo. And this is kind of where I have am so offended by these business models. And I understand why they did it in the beginning, but like as I said, he don't need to do it no more. He's going to do sorcery. You can see the next pump is sorcery. He got two to three years before <laughs> to do sorcery, right? He's already moved on to the next pump. Like, people don't understand. He's listed a bunch of things he tried to pump. And and now he's getting kicked out of Flesh and Blood. He doesn't want to do Meta Zoo anymore. Um, it is what it is, you know? Like, um, Rudy is here to sell you cards at a premium price. You're not going to get the cheapest price. You're not even going to get a good price, as many of his patrons have, um, have looked at it. Why am I paying $15 just to get hosed? And that's a good question for these patrons, but they're stupid. So they continue to pay $15. I do think uh, in terms of business models, this has got to be one of the more strange ones because he can easily hire, like, here's a solution for Rudy. He doesn't want to hear it and he'll never do it, but here's a solution. Hire an employee to just do shipping. Do the shipping right. Make sure, you know, there's so many shipping complaints I hear about. There's so many that, you know, I get emails about. You got a problem in shipping. I know that you are shipping it yourself, but, like, you need to hire somebody who's really good at shipping and can take the time to ship these very expensive orders correctly. Next thing he needs to do, he's got to hire more people. He got to hire more people. Open your local game store, have it for gameplay, then, boom, done. Right? That's it. All everyone, every game store that's complaining would not be complaining. Oh, okay, maybe someone complained to complain. They would not be complaining if you had the overhead they did and you created the game, you built the community. It feels really savage, in my opinion, for you to spend all this money and resources to build a community for Flesh and Blood or Meadow Zoo, right? God forbid, Meadow Zoo. And then, and then they're all just buying stuff from you. So you're the main beneficiary of me building the community. Why should I build a community? When they're just going to buy from you. And the idea that he's just like private. That No. It's, it's, it's Amazon private to buy us. No. You just pay for a membership. And you go. There are plenty of memberships open. Because I know this. Because I get screenshot this all the time. Like there are a lot of people dropping. And even in this um, email. He suggests that the LSS employees have all dropped the patrons. So oh yeah. You can just pick up those memberships right. And what. It would be like no membership thing. It'd be like Costco. Like, oh, Costco is a private company, guys. It doesn't sell to the public. But you just go get a card, get a Costco card. What's going on here? So this is also something that, you know, I find that it, it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, he is selling to the public. The public is Timmy. So if someone as stupid as Timmy can get a membership, then yes, it is selling to the public, right? Timmy is the public. He's not getting special offers or deals he can't get on Amazon or even, you know, I mean, look at Amazon, for instance. It's cheaper, you know. Anyway, my overall takeaway from this is pretty, pretty brutal. And I'll just tell you, his business model no longer works. We're going into a player model. This, this is something that you see in cycles. We are done the investor cycle where people buy a shit ton of boxes to keep in the closet. Those people who bought a shit ton of boxes, they don't want any more boxes anymore. And what they found out is they can't sell their boxes. So they're canceling patrons because they don't, well, who needs more magic boxes? Who needs Ravnica remastered 
collector's edition times 24 box. Nobody needs it anymore. They already have a whole closet of returned around the clock, right? That is still selling buy listing for $80 online on Card Kingdom. Like, who needs it? Like, nobody. Um, and who wants it? Nobody. Like, liquidity on these products are <laughs> near zero. A lot of the Meta Zoo products, I mean, you'd be happy to sell five or six of them on TCG+. Plus. They don't even have a money effing link. You gotta, like, go to more where they list all their card games, and they're listing all of them. That's where they put Meta Zoo, guys. So I've looked at all these Meta Zoo kits, and none of them have been profitable today. If you held on to the kit, you're down 90% at least on the box itself. And again, I don't really give value to promos because, I mean, why? I mean, the, the liquidity on the promos is even less than the boxes. There are fewer people. And if, let's say Rudy quits MetaZoo. You think his promos will still be valuable? Think about it.